marinated in the fridge overnight in barbecue sauce in the other season. So, um, now if you want to try to make this recipe, this is about 10 pounds of chicken. I got five pounds in each uh, pan. This is uh, some drumsticks and a few wings. And my usual season is my, remember my season I made up two tablespoons of everything in the cabinet. That's it. Sprinkle it on that meat. And then you pour that ball of barbecue sauce on there and let it sit and marinate overnight. And I'm going to run it through the oven for about 35 minutes. I'm going to leave it covered for 35 minutes. Then I'll take the cover off and let it finish cooking. Okay. So, in that other pan of chicken is going to be lemon pepper chicken. This is one of my favorites. So, I've done the same thing with it. I put it. I don't even cover it for y'all. I just need to tell you what's under there. You can believe me. Okay, under here I've got another five pounds of chicken that I've marinated <coughs> excuse me, with lemon pepper seasoning and all my other usual seasoning out of the cabinet. And I've been having it to marinate overnight. And what I'm going to do with it also is put it on the oven 375 degrees, 35 minutes, and I'm going to uncover it and let it finish cooking. About another good hour, so it'll be nice and tender. So the oven's already preheated. Trust me, I'm gonna put it on the second rack. <coughs> there it goes. I'm gonna set it, ah, but I ain't gonna forget it. Okay, next up, macaroni and cheese. So I'm gonna cook enough macaroni and cheese. Got a big crowd, especially with kids, you know. We're going to do two pans of mac and cheese. So what I will use is uh, two, I'm going to use two boxes of uh, one pound, two one pound boxes rather, and then I'm going to use half of another one. So I'm going to use two and a half pounds of mac and macaroni to make two pans of, like this, okay? So if you need to make that much, if you only need to make one pan like this, then one box. When you have kids, you know, you have to use, uh, you have to put lots of mac and cheese. There's no such thing as kids and a little bit of mac and cheese. My kids, anyway. Okay, so I'm not going to make y'all look at the paint dry. You know, macaroni just balls, and when it gets done, I'll let you see what I put in. So hold on just a sec. Okay, y'all, I'm back. I'm getting ready to make the cheese sauce for my mac and cheese. Uh, I'm going to use some different cheese this time that I've not tried before. I found this bag of Shaved Blend by Bel Gossios. I think I'm saying it right. Bel Gossios is an Italian blended cheese. It's all natural cheese for salads and more. It has Asiago, Parmesan, and Romano cheese. So I'm looking forward to a great mac and cheese from this. So what I'm going to start out doing is... Uh, like I said, I'm making these two pan, two pans like this of uh, macaroni and cheese. So, can't see it. but anyway, I showed y'all the pans earlier. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start out, and this is uh, one of those recipes that I'm testing. Uh, I've never used this recipe before, and hopefully, I will be able to use it again. So, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and start out with uh, this is about four cups of milk so far. Probably need more now. I, I'm gonna go ahead and start out with six cups of milk because I'm sure with all that macaroni, I'll need it. Start out with six cups of milk, and this is just my, my reduced fat milk. Whatever kind of milk you have, uh, sitting around the refrigerator, I happen to have this, and then I got a another cup of that evapor food line evaporated milk. Well, I'd already poured that in, and um. There will be butter in the mac and cheese, but I put it on the noodles. I went ahead and buttered my noodles real good first with a, a couple sticks of butter. And I'm going to start out <clears throat> with that six cups of, uh, and th let me tell y'all something. This is serious cheese right here, so it's very strong, and it's going to be wonderful. And I'm going to use some regular yellow cheddar cheese in this recipe as well. So you get that uh, tartness and that... Uh, so what I do is I got my milk going. And remember now, you can't turn milk up high. You have to have it down low when you're doing this. And you got to start it out let that cheese melt slowly. 
So this part of the recipe is going to take a little bit of time because you, you don't want to burn or scorch it as long as we could always say. But as you allow that milk to heat up, it will begin to melt that cheese. So I've already got one cup in. I'm going to put about, start out with three cups of cheese. And that will let me know if I need to put more based on the taste. Because like I said, this cheese is very, very strong. I mean, when I say it's strong, it's a serious, strong cheese. That I say, I go, you can't beat it. Woo, love it. And I call it stinky cheese. It has that, you know how people say, uh, somebody's socks smell like old cheese. Well, honey, let me, I'm here to tell you, this is some serious cheese right here. And, um... So I'm going to put another cup and a half in there. We're going to see how it melts down, how it blends in with this milk. And of course, I probably might use a little bit of flour water to thicken. That will keep me from having to put too much cheese. I don't want the cheese to overpower, but I do want it to be a good blend. So I got, let me put the other half a cup. And then say three cups to six cups. That's another, that's another half cup right there. Okay. Okay, let's put that to the side, I believe. And I'm going to just continue to let this melt. And when it gets melted down to a point, you see it's starting to melt already. Okay. It's starting to melt really good. Whew. Okay, well, I'm a cheese lover from my heart. I, I went to my friend uh, Barb's house last night, and one of her friends is visiting her from uh, Wisconsin. And Lord have mercy, she brought a block of uh, Wisconsin cheese with wine, with red wine. Oh, my goodness. Let me tell you, I had kind of got off cheese a little bit because I was eating too much cheese. Now, this little cheese you buy right here in the store, <laughs> I'm here to tell you, it's nothing compared to that good old Wisconsin cheese that I tasted last night. That cheese what made me get... Ooh, that, that, it was real cheese. So, you know, Wisconsin is uh, famous for its Wisconsin cheese. So, it was really good. That was a treat. Um, we'll just sit and chit-chat it for a little bit. Hopefully, Barbara and uh, Janine. Janine is, I think Janine is French. Hmm. I think she is French. Anyway, she used to work in the restaurant with Barbara. So they became very good friends. And she is visiting. Um, so, hopefully, they'll come by for man man's birthday we're gonna have a house full today y'all uh, i'm melting the cheese for your mac and cheese man man checking me out i'm melting the cheese for your mac and cheese so this is uh it's gonna be some good mac and cheese boy and see you don't bite that boy one of these days you i'm gonna get you in the kitchen with me and let you just help me just cook how about that okay. Cause I believe you. I believe you stay in the kitchen. I try to get Kareem, but you know he, uh, Kareem want to eat and, and play them games. He, he practices. But one thing I can say, he play. He competitively plays uh, video games, and he gets on there and he goes and uh, listens, tunes in, and listens to the guys that are champions at it and people who make games and and talk about the uh, pitfalls and the. Uh, give tips on how to make the game better. So that's why he's able to beat just about all his opponents. You know, Kareem always wins the games, right? You, mm -hmm. Did you know that about your cousin? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. He's a champion. That's why he's always on his games. He always wins because he goes, just like anything else, whatever your craft is, you have to study. And since he was a little boy, he knew how to uh, play the games and he knew how to play it very well. I'm going to go ahead and put, I got to put that much butter in there. That was just real butter right there. Okay. So anyway, um, Kareem studies his craft by listening to the people who uh, are. Like milk. Well, because I got, okay, this right here is six cups of milk. Well, maybe eight cups and three cups of cheese. So I got, yeah. I'm just I'm melting it down when it gets all melted down. What I'm going to do, I'll put a little flour on it thicken it to make it real creamy but the milk gives it that real good creamy flavor so it won't just be just a block of cheese okay you smell that chicken in there cooking i took the i paste. don't smell it yet you don't smell it mm -hmm. okay now i'm just gonna smell it 
Well, who's on the uh, I think it'd be nice when you get out there on the porch and all, everybody, all the kids will be out there on the porch and get you, um, get everybody out there and y'all can play it. I'll put the music out there for y'all. Oh, um, you want to ask Alicia if she wants to come over? You want her to come? You see, you can walk over. They might be, well, they may be home. Okay. Tell me, it's going to be about 4 o'clock when we eat, man, man. That's the neighbor child. I don't know how I managed to get the car simply, but I did. So. But we'll get it over here. Yeah, that's melting down nicely. Very nicely. I think I'm going to put me one more cup of... Um, a little bit more of cheese in there. Because in between that cheese, when I get ready to layer about another half a cup of cheese. Okay. About a teaspoon of Teaspoon of salt in there. Okay. Cheese string. Cheese stringing everywhere. You know what? Man, man is such a gentle. See, he's a big guy. But he has such a gentle, genuine, precious spirit. I just love. And I, I love all my grandchildren. But you know, uh, it's just like different people in your life. You just have. When they're special, then you have that special thing about them. And, and he is such a special. All of my kids are special. But this kid is so genteel. But at the same time, he's, um, you know, he's a young man. And he has his little idiosyncrasies like anybody else does. And his little uh, things we have to get on him about, you know. He got into a little push and tug with a guy at school. So I had to kind of teach him about, um, you know, turn the other cheek, walk away. And especially these days, you know, it's, you know, used to be, you get into a little fight, <laughs> um, and it was okay, you fight on the shed, people behind the house, on the school, you know, well, in my day, wasn't no school, but, but you get into your little things, and, you know, whoever won, won, whoever knocked the chip off the show, and all that kind of stuff, you could do that, but these days, honey, it just is not safe, it's safer now, if you can walk away, walk away. But now, you know, we ain't nobody going to stand there and let nobody just beat them down. And we, we understand that part, too. But at the same time, you know, I would say teach your children wisdom. But see, my children came along when you fought. When my children fought. Sorry. Now, Tanya did not. But uh, Tazzy and, and Tony, they, oh, yeah, they, you know, you push, shove them. And sometimes you said too much. You had a fight on your hands. But you can't do it that way these days. Simply because the mindset of children is, is, is just, you know, they, they retali retaliation is the name of the game these days. So you can't really, you know, it's kind of hard to, whew, it's just real hard. And I hate that children cannot settle their differences the way we used to be able to get under the shade tree and fight or go behind the house and have us a fight and it's, you know, and it's over. It just didn't, it didn't you know. It was okay then, but these days, nah, you can't do that no more, honey. You might get a knife or a gun put in your face. So, my thing is what I try to teach, especially when I'm, I'm talking to my, I'm putting some little flour water in here now. I got my heat all the way down. I need to thicken because that flavor is in there. There's enough of that strong cheese in this uh, mixture right now. So, we don't need to put any more cheese except for the cheddar. And sort of give it that little tart taste. But anyway, as I was saying, you know, it's hard these days uh, trying to get your children to do what they need to do in terms of settling conflict. And I think um, that's a big issue along with all these other things. And, you know, when you see it in leader, when leadership does not know how to reasonably settle conflict 
Then, of course, the children follow, or they say, or the, the, the lack thereof, they say, well, you, you're not, you not uh, backing down. Why should I? You know. But, you know, it's the old thing. For when I came up, my mom and dad would tell us, you know, don't do what you see me doing. You do what I tell you to do. And that's what we did, pretty much. You know, so these days, you know, for the most part, kids don't, they don't abide by that too much. Every once in a while, you find a group that will. But for the most part, they ain't, they ain't hearing it. They ain't hearing it. Okay, people. Okay. Oh, no, that's a lot of macaroni over there. Shoot, you the truth, that's a lots of macaroni. Mmm. Look at that cheese. Woo! That cheese, I love it, I love it, I love it. It'll start thickening here in a little bit because like I said, I got that heat turned all the way down. And as it heats up a little bit more, a little bit more, it'll uh, it'll begin to heat. So I'm going to say, hold on a minute and I'll be right back. <laughs> they having the most fun. This is Man Man's birthday. I am so excited. I just love to have children have fun and be happy. I do. It excites me. Other than food, that's the only other thing pretty much is happiness. Okay, y'all. I'm back. That cheese sauce is just, it's a white cheese sauce because remember, I'm using Asiago Parmesan and, um, what was the other? Asiago Parmesan and Romano cheese. Those are white cheese. So that's why I do, uh, cheese sauce is white so i got it already so what i'm gonna do i got a, a stick of butter already in here with, in my noodles just turn it around there so you can see and what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna pour this entire pan because i know i'm gonna need all of this cheese sauce in order for this uh for everything to blend for it to have enough cheese in it and then i'm just gonna start dipping it into the pan and I'll put the yellow cheese in between. I'm just going to chase these noodles. And, of course, I cook my noodles. Remember, I told y'all a long time ago, but I'll say it again. I cook my noodles with salt water to knock that edge off of it. And I feel like I need another tablespoon of salt in there. Because we don't want to uh, put all this new cheese and get all, everything going. And I have enough salt. But, I mean, but they're not bland bland, but I just need a little bit more. Plus, I've got butter on these noodles. I butter them. Let me put my other. I butter them with, uh, that's the rest of that other half a stick that I put in my cheese sauce. So, I've got a stick and a half of uh, butter in here. Salt. You just do all this to taste. And when it tastes right, then you know you got it going. And I'm going to hit it with a little bit of black pepper. Um, you know, I tell y'all, black pepper just does something. Um, I hit it with a little, I always put a little black pepper in my mac and cheese. So that black pepper just does what it needs to do. Whatever it does, it, it, it does. It knows what it needs to do, so it does it. Not a lot to overpower, but enough to, you know, when you're eating, you, you're trying to figure out, what is that? That other little flavor in that mac and cheese. Well, it may very well be black pepper. I don't know. I might not be the only one to use black pepper in there. But I like um, extra flavor in food. I like surprise flavor as long as it's a good surprise in food. So I'm going to do the one more little taste test. Might need another teaspoon of salt. That's a lot of noodles, y'all. You know the noodles are bland, bland, bland. So you have to. So I got the cheese sauce over here standing by. It's anxiously awaiting. 
to be poured into these noodles. Let me tell y'all one thing. Real butter, salt and pepper on noodles is good right by itself. I just want to let y'all know that. And a little black pepper on it. Oh yeah, it's a meal. Mm-hmm. Yummy. Yum, yum. Perfect. Okay. Recap. Before I pour this in. To make. Two of these aluminum pans. Of mac and cheese. Like this. Two of these half size. You know the aluminum pans. Two of those. Two one pound. About two and one half pounds of. Uncooked macaroni. Boiled up. Season it up. Remember, put salt in your water. Take that bland taste off of it. Butter those noodles. A little bit of black pepper in those noodles. <clears throat> now, the cheese sauce, of course, like I said, I use um, and I told y'all six cups, but this is ten cups of easy real, about eight to ten cups of milk in here. So I'm just going to take and pour this cheese sauce all on there. Except for a little bit. Mm. Oh Lord. That cheese sauce is so good. It's so good. Change your voice. Mm. It's so wonderful. So good. Mm. You know, um, everything's already cooked, so you know when you put it in the oven, you don't have to put it in and dry it out. Just put it in there and cook it enough. Um, okay. Just enough, just enough. This is going to be so absolutely wonderful. Mm, 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 mm. I say this right here, even even at this stage, you could eat it just like it is. Y'all. That is so good. So good. And what I'm going to do right now, <clears throat> I'm going to put about a half of a cup of milk on top of that. You know why I'm doing that? Because the pan is going to be so thick and so deep. I want that cheese to have enough moisture to cook down through there. So just, just another half a cup of milk is all I put on there. Okay. So now what I'm going to start doing now is to putting it into the pan. And what I will do is put that, um, let me see how many layers I want to do. This is, uh, I've got another, so I've already used three cups. So I, this is another four cups of cheese I got to put in here, my sharp cheddar. This is a new brand from the commissary. It's called uh, Freedom's Choice. It's good cheese. It's good cheese, y'all. So I'm going to start to uh, get some space here. I'm just going to start putting the macaroni into uh the pan because we get ready now we get to the final stage now so all we do here is just go ahead and put it in spoon it in reason i'm spooning it because i want to layer this other chip i'm gonna put two cups of cheese in each pan okay so that's my first layer All right, sous chef, you should have had this. Now, what I, I know how to measure. So, okay, you know, this is two cups of cheese going in, okay? Okay. And this yellow cheese is just to kick it up a notch. Because actually, you could just stop right there with the melted cheese and it would be fine. It wouldn't make a bitter difference at all. It would be just fine. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead with my next layer. This is a lot of noodles. 
So we're gonna make it, it will make a uh, like three layers, okay? Got one more layer to go after this layer. And this is perfect. That that two and a half boxes, I think, because you want a good full paint. You don't want no good shallow paint. And this is now when you do this, remember, it's gonna be a good full paint. It's not gonna be a shallow paint. Okay. Where'd you go? Oh, you said what a good walk. Sound like you walked further than that. Oh, you just went what they were so they were home. Okay. Last layer. You don't want to get it too full now because you know um you don't want nothing to uh to to spill over. Okay. Okay. So that first fan there is about ready. Oh, sorry. So, what they say? They, they're going to be over or they got something else to do today? They said they won't be over. They, was, they can come over after they get finished because they're going to celebrate Darren's birthday because we were just on this season. Oh, really? Darren had a birthday. I didn't know it was Darren's birthday. Oh, you are another cheese? Mm-hmm. See that? Awesome. Yeah, see how it does? Creamy. Yep, nice. This is going to be really good. Some extra good cheese on there. Okay, so that's the first thing. That's the mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do two pans of it. Yeah, one more. Look like some lasagna. Uh, <laughs> and I said, look like some lasagna. Well, basically, you make it the same way. Except for it's with mac and cheese. Mac and cheese, you're going to have the meat and the uh, tomato sauce in it. Oh, you have Parmesan cheese in it? Yeah, you, I well, never knew that because yeah. I never tasted it. Well, you know, Grandma, I put everything in the cabinet in there. And really, you know, you could. This is already cooked. I'm just putting this in. It's got to go in the oven for a little bit. So you can melt that cheese. There you go. You the man. You could be a chef, boy. Just got to get that cheese melted down, and then uh, it's ready to eat. Cause, but like I say, basically everything is ready. Uh, the other thing that I'm gonna do too here. I'm going to put, uh, I got some melted butter. Melted butter? Yeah. That's got nice. got some melted butter. I'm just going to drizzle it, drizzle it, drizzle it, drizzle it. Like I said, this man man birthday. Give so this got texture and right, texture. Right, right there you go. He already knew. Okay. So we're going to probably use a scoop of butter doing this. So now that pan there is ready to go into the oven. Okay. Go ahead. Well, no, 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 not yet. I'm gonna sit it off to the side. What I need to do, I got the chicken, and I need to see what the chicken is doing here shortly. Okay, so you were here. The smell is just you smell wonderful. Yeah, smells great. So, man, man, talk to the camera. Tell them where they don't see you. You can talk and tell them how you feel about being. Tell them how you feel about being twelve. Well, I feel Talk good. Up. I feel good being twelve because I'm starting to grow up, and there's a lot of stuff that I got start learning to do, start learning to do. Cause since I'm a preteen now. Well, wow, he said, "See, he excited. He, he's he's he hear that y'all get that. He's a preteen now, y'all. <laughs> Don't you just love it when little children when when, when you." When your little babies grow up and that wisdom start coming through, don't you just love it? So now today we just gonna it's gonna be freestyle. We <laughs> look, we freestyle. Did it sell message? Okay, y'all, we're back. We get ready to put this last pan in. We'll be right back. How about that? Thank you. Okay, here we are, part two. That's the panel. 
pan right there. That's what I Okay. Anyway, what I got going on right here right now, I got the barbecue chicken is almost done. Now, you see how barbecue chicken cooks in the oven. It's kind of light on this side <clears throat> and brown with the red season. We're going to flip these chicken pieces over. And we're going to put some more sauce on them on top there. We're going to run them back through the oven. Let them, let them run through that for a little while, y'all. Hey, Tina. Hey, Wanda. What's up? Just think about you guys. Y'all mind. I love everybody, but Tina and Wanda, I don't know why y'all names just came to mind just right then. Okay, so what I'm doing now is just <coughs> re-saucing these. I'm going to put them back in there. They're pretty much done. We're doing the, like glazing. The same thing. I did the same thing with the lemon chicken. I made some lemon uh, had some of the juices that come off the meat. I just thickened it a little bit. We're going to call it lemon pepper gravy. Hey, Lulu, I'm going to do the this? same thing. Same thing with this barbecue chicken. It's going to run it back here on the top rack because I want it to brown on the top. Is that hot? Yep, that's hot. That As you can see, pretty much that lemon chicken is just about there. Um, I'm just still basting. So make sure that you have to take it out and base it so you <clears throat> will have it all nice and pretty and brown when it comes out here. That one needs to be flipped over. Okay. Um, so I have to go through it and look at it. And I don't like that. Uh, I like my chicken nice and brown colored. Okay. Okay. I think these pieces here too. Yep. And you know what your lemon pepper is going to look a little yellowish in color. But uh, nonetheless, we flip them over a little bit. We just let them brown up. That's hot, you know, it ain't too hot. Mmm, mmm, yum, yum. It gave me an excuse to taste. So we just, and y'all don't do this. My hands, I'm, I'm just used to it. I know how to handle hot food. This is not a good idea, but I do. I don't have to walk across the room and get that spoon or tongues that should be right here. So, anywho, I'm going to run it back through the oven just for a little while longer. You know what? This piece right here, just on, that's kind of a big size chicken leg. He hot too. I'm going to get him up there on top. Yeah. Mm. Finally! Thank you so much. Jeez. <clears throat> Get them basted up real good. Get them back in the oven. Okay. It's time for them to go back in there. And you know what? Every once in a while, look, this is the truth cook cooking. You might see a feather. Pull it off. Please. You just don't even pretend like all the feathers are off. Every once in a while, I cook. And there's a feather or two. But occasionally, I get it. And not every feather they ever had was gone. That one had one, one or two little feathers, so it's just a matter of pulling it off. Okay, back to the cooking. Okay, the next thing I'm going to work on, now I'm going to make chili. Uh, oh, let me just show y'all. The mac and cheese is out also. Mac and cheese is out. Got two pans of it. I'm just going to, now that it's out of the oven, I'm just going to cover it. Cover it. Okay, the mac and cheese is done. I'm, I'm rolling now because now I got to make the chili for the hot dogs. This is the some of the, the uh, sauce that came off that chicken. I'm going to thicken it a little bit and it'll be like a dipping sauce. Okay, so whatever. At some point when you're cooking, you know, I talked about how chicken secretes a lot of juices. So when that juice, don't throw that juice away. You can use it to cook with or you can take it and thicken it a little bit, season it up a little bit more and use it as a dipping sauce. So I'm, that's going to be a dipping sauce, okay? So, I've still got to cook cabbage and the hamburgers and this chili. I'm getting ready to do the chili right now. Okay. I am uh, not doing a lot of chili because we don't need a lot. Just a little bit to garnish those uh, hot dogs. Just some extra for the kids because they like chili dogs. You know how chili dogs. Okay. A little bit of oil. 
I'm gonna take and pour that in the pan where I'm gonna fry those burgers. I'm not putting them on the grill because I don't feel like frying that grill up today. So I have here uh, just a pound of these. Yeah, one pound of uh, ground. Oh, I talked to you. She'll be going later. That hip is buzzing again. Mm. Yeah, she said. She would be if she break. She would be on. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get this ground beef in here. Mm. What's in it? In the green deal. Oh. I think she'll be back. She left Thursday. And she'll probably be back Thursday. She usually stay out a week. Anyway. Brown this ground beef just like you do for any other purpose. And then we'll start putting the ingredients in. While that's working, I'm going to go ahead and start putting these hamburgers in. And then I'm going to tune out and come back. And of course, all you, you know, all I'm going to do with these hamburgers is just... Season them up, put them in the pan, cook them up, and uh, get them ready for consumption. Okay, so hold on. Medium high heat for the ground beef. And I'm going to be putting some garlic powder, some uh, chili powder, a little ketchup, and a little bit of sugar. And that's going to be it, a little brown sugar. Oh, I got to do baked beans. <laughs> okay, I did say baked beans. Okay, so we're going to let that go ahead and cook right along. I'll be right back. Okay, y'all, I got the uh, ground beef is all browned. Teaspoon of uh, garlic powder goes in there. And I've already put the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the chili powder. Teaspoon of chili powder. Put a little bit more. Let's get it all browned and mixed in there. And of course, I put a little, just a, I want some of my uh, mixture, my, my homemade mixture seasoning. Um. Need black pepper. A half a teaspoon of black pepper. And this is one pound of ground beef, y'all. A little black pepper. And about a half a teaspoon of my homemade mixture. Not a lot. You don't want it too salty because you're going to want a little tart, tangy flavor going on in there. And you don't need to put a lot. You know, this kind of chili, hot dog, this is hot dog chili. Okay. So you can make this, you can use these uh, ingredients based on one pound. And this will, this will probably chili up 12 hot dogs because you, I mean, you some try to make a meal out of it, just a teaspoon, tablespoon per hot dog, and you're good to go. Now, if somebody come over there and try to make a meal out of it, you might not, might not go too far. Uh oh. Let's get that brown beef good and seasoned up. And then I'm going to put me a tablespoon of brown sugar in there. My grandma would say, meat when it's not seasoned, she'd get the fresh off of it. You get the fresh off of that. Man, we're going to use a tablespoon of this brown sugar. Uh, you see a good heaping tablespoon. Heaping tablespoon, y'all. Mix it up. <clears throat> then we're going to do about a fourth of a cup of uh, ketchup. That's a fourth right there. Or you could use, I could use tomato paste. It doesn't matter, either one. Tomato paste, or you could use the ketchup. Or you could use both, really, seriously. Depending on what you want it to taste like. And I'm going to let this just cook until we get ready to use it. Yum. It's real good. It's that simple to make, y'all. A little bit more on my seasoning.
fourth of a cup, I'm going to squeeze that ketchup. Like fourth of a cup, I'm going to squeeze. And you know, cooking food, as we talked about earlier, it's about what you want it to taste like. If uh, you don't put sugar in your food, don't put sugar. I mean, I, maybe you want chili without that taste. I don't know. But, uh, let me see. Let me see. Mm -hmm. That's one for y'all. I'm going to put a lid on it and turn it all the way on low and let it cook till I get ready to use it. And that's how you make simple chili dogs. Chili for chili dogs. Okay, y'all, it's time to get these burgers going. These are 100% pure burger beef patties. They're by uh, they're Philly Gourmet. I bought these out of the commissary. 16 in a box for $15. So I guess it's what? A dollar a burger. A little bit pricey, but that's okay. We're hoping they're going to be real good. And what I like about them, they're quarter pounders. So, um, I thought that was a pretty good price. So what I'm going to do right here is just get them taken apart. They're in two separate packages. Eight in each little package. So I'm going to start out with these eight, get them going. Then uh, get the rest of them cooked up. So hold on just a minute. This is what they look like pre before they are cooked. Like I said, they are fit called Philly Gourmet Burgers. Okay. And of course, I'm going to season them with the usual seasoning. The same season that I season my steaks with. The one I season my chicken with. Everything. I season basically the same season. Just You don't need to do a whole lot because you don't want it to overpower what a burger tastes like with uh, ketchup, mustard, and whatever. And some people may just go ahead and put a little bit of that chili on there. We got that for the hot dogs today. But a burger, you know, you can make a burger and put uh, I've got cheese slices. You can put cheese on it for those who want cheese, or you can put, uh, you can even fry an egg and put it on there. <clears throat> That's what we used to eat them over in Spain, called ambergesi. Okay, all y'all Spanish folks, I know I might not have got it quite right, but that was close. But those were the best hamburgers, with all the, let's see, this lettuce, tomatoes, onions, cheese. And then they put that fried egg on there. That was some good eating, y'all. Okay, so these babies are about ready to get in the pan. I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit. Because y'all know me, I'm extra. A little bit of my, uh, remember I showed y'all the other day that steak seasoning? It's the best in the world. Look, I cooked these for Kareem the other day with some broccoli. Y'all saw it. And he said, Grandma, when are you going to cook that again? So it must have been quite tasty to him. You don't have to put a lot. As you can see, I'm just, I, I, I really need a little spray bottle. But this will spray it out once you put it in the pan. So you don't have to put a whole lot. But just enough to get on there. Because who wants a plain burger? I don't. Don't you hate it when you eat one of them burgers that have no season? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, get them over here in the pan, and they're going to have to cook about four minutes on each side to get them done, and maybe I can get, let's see, five in the pan, thank you so much, and when they shrink down, because they are going to shrink, when they shrink down, uh, <clears throat> we put more in the pan, so the burgers are on, okay, look there, they're on, okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, this is Man Man's uh, special birthday cookie. How about that? This is what he wanted. It's a big old, uh, what is it, chocolate chip cookie for his birthday. Lisa's, while Lisa's putting on his candles, I'm going to go over here. Because these, these natives are restless. They're ready to eat. Uh, these are his uh, cupcakes from Sam's Club. We're going to go around this way and we're going to talk about the meal right quick. The food is done. Barbecue chicken, lemon chicken, mac and cheese. I got two of those. Those are hamburgers. We got some hot dogs. We got corn. We got cabbage. And we got baked beans. And we got Kareem over here ready. So we get ready to do this here shortly. Um, we're just going on outside. The kids are going to be out here. 
see we got that radiator out there. So, yeah. We got still got some more folks to come, but for right now, this is what we're getting ready to do. And that's Kylie Poo Poo. Hey, Philco. That's Karan's baby there. Hey, Philco. And of course, y'all know that's Lauren. Okay, y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in on the flavor train and in my kitchen. Thank y'all for hanging in there with me. It's been a long day, but we get ready to round it out. Hopefully, you'll see this on the flavor train, but if not, y'all look at Come on in, and it'll be on there. So, until I cook again, love you guys. Keep the prayers going up so the blessings will continue to come down. I'm going to say to Lou, where's Man Man? I'm going to get Man Man up here so we can go and say happy birthday to him right quick. And after all, this is his day. No, that's Kareem. That's Kareem. That's Tansy's baby child. Well, you see, you see about him. Yeah, yeah Kareem. Yeah. She remembers those eyes. He ready. He's yeah, stunning. Uh, stunning. <laughs> uh, tell Man Man to come on right quick. Man Man. Oh, okay. Okay, there's Man Man's big old birthday cookie. That's what he wanted. He didn't want a cake, he wanted a cookie. So he got his big old personal cookie, and he's 12 years old. So y'all, uh, when y'all hit me up, tell him happy birthday so I can pass it on to him. Love you guys. Remember now, keep the prayers going up so the blessings will continue to come down. Love y'all. To Lou. Okay. What are the kids? Okay. Where is Mammy? Okay.